All right. Hi, everybody. If you're here to draw, you're in the right place. Uh, tonight should be a really, really fun night. Uh, just a reminder, Drawing Hive is brought to you by Visual Arts Passage. And what we do at Visual Arts Passage is we create, uh, help people develop careers. We're an online resource that helps artists develop careers in illustration and painting. And we do a, a superb job of it. So uh, if you want to learn more, check it out, Visual Arts Passage. All right, tonight's going to be really fun. Uh, we're drawing witches. And uh, there's there's some really fun things to draw here. Some great reference. I got some, I think I got a really good artist uh, to... Um, uh, to talk about in the in the educational side, and we have a really fun guest tonight, uh, Dustin Dearnault. And I'll I was gonna say it's not Maggie Smith. <laughs> no, not Maggie Smith. Uh, I'm going I'm I'm to show some of Dustin's work here in yeah. just a second. But uh, 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 let's get through the reference. We got Maggie Smith. We got uh, Margaret Hamilton. We got Charlie the Goat. <laughs> What's his name? Black Philip, right? Uh, it's just like Charlie the Goat. In the movie uh, The Witch. And then we have uh, Anna Taylor Joy. Um, great references should be fun to draw. We do uh, three poses, uh, two 20 minute and one 40 minute pose. You can draw them all, you can focus on one. But I brought a really good drawer, and I'd like to say a good friend in tonight, uh, Dustin Diarnault. Dustin, say hi. Hey. Hey, everyone. Uh, thanks for having me, John. Timmy and Cassandra, I'm stoked to be a part of this. And uh, yeah, John, it's going to be it's gonna be great. Hey, D Dustin's a character designer and visual development artist. He lives in Los Angeles. I give you some of, the, some of my favorite things that he's worked on, some of his most notable things, The Book of Life, uh, The Final Season of Samurai Jack, Maya and the Tree, um, uh, the uh, Nickelodeon's uh, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles film that came out. Um, some of the studios he's worked for. This is impressive. I got my list out here, Dustin. Uh, next, Netflix animation, Disney TV, Warner Brothers animation, Cartoon Network, Nickelodeon animation, uh, studio Sony Pictures animation, Real Effects, Creative Studio, Six Point Harness, Framestone, and Carbon VX. Um, and I will tell you that Dustin is a crazy good drawer, very personal in the way he draws. There's some really fun things. Maybe you could just say what a, a few of these are for, Dustin. Uh, we can read the credits, but. Um... Sure. Um, yeah. So some of the stuff that you see on screen is for, uh, I think the little top right or top, top left corner would be uh, for Book of Life. I mean, um, for Samurai Jack. Uh, I'm sorry. I still have work you know. um uh so the top part would be samurai jack so i got to you know help design some of the final monster you know samurai boss at the bottom would be book of life and my and the three one is actually production art and the other one was uh illustration i did for the crew as like a you know a crew gift to get to my peers um on the next to that would be ninja turtles like uh some, some environment a vehicle paint you know design paint for the movie and above that would be two samples of some personal work one being like a personal illustration i did for fun with some uh some co-workers uh, it's a you know baboon um on wall street and uh, the other one would be like some live uh landscape painting i did when i was in thailand so well uh very personal drawer and i know that you know it uh obviously affects the way you design characters and all of that all of the 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 time the miles put into drawing um, but, um, thank you for being here tonight, Dustin. Uh, we got plenty to talk about. I uh, love drawing with you and always love the way you draw. So, uh, yeah, should, be, should be a fun night. So I guess I could say, let's get drawing. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Right. And everybody, uh, my name's Timmy. Uh, I know I, I've, I've heard a couple of people say this is their first time joining us. So thank you for joining. I'm going to drop a link to the photo reference in the chat. Um, also a link to our discord. If you ever want to be more part of the conversation, um, please post your work throughout the night on Instagram with us. The hashtags tonight um, are 
Hashtag drawing hive. Hashtag drawing hive two two three. Episode two hundred and twenty three. Just crazy. And, yeah, I know. <laughs> an, av an average Lord's Pass. I haven't done anything two hundred and twenty three times. Um, <laughs> an average Lord's Passage. We're gonna check it out at the end of the night. It's my favorite thing. Um, seeing how many different ways you can draw a goat is fun. Um, also Charlie the goat. Uh, we glossed right over that. Charlie the goat is uh, pretty fun. There's some pretty fun legend behind that goat. I don't know. <laughs> Charlie the goat. Yeah. Do tell. Charlie... I want. I want to hear all about Charlie the. Oh, he's a badass. <laughs> yeah, Charlie was awesome. Charlie the goat was cast in the film The Witch, which I believe is like a 2017, 2018 movie, and. Uh, First of all, is I don't know what kind of goat that is, but it's definitely the creepiest iteration of goat <laughs> that exists. <laughs> yeah, the curlier the horn, <laughs> the more uh the more occult it looks, I guess. Um, but Charlie, I guess, uh did not get along, did not want the life of stardom, and uh was uh developed a reputation for just attacking people on set. And John, you were saying hospitalized one of the leads in the film, right? Yeah. What? Uh, uh badly but i mean yeah badly really which in the film in this film i know uh, you know here's a spoiler for the witch you know earmuffs if you care but um that's part of the plot is that the is that the goat does you know mortally wound someone but mm -hmm. <laughs> but but actually very seriously wounded uh cast uh members of the cat a member of the cast on set so that was charlie's last film <laughs> First and last. Which is first and last, which is kind of awesome to imagine like an animal that you know, animals have so especially like animals in care of uh of humans have so little uh choice over their um the paths that they're put down. And uh I like that Charlie really was like, No, I am not gonna be a celebrity goat. <laughs> 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 I I thought it was kind of cool. I mean, I feel bad for the person that got severely wounded by charlie <laughs> that he's like that, that obvious that obviously is tragic <laughs> the mickey rourke of goats i'm pretty sure they're okay so hopefully they are that i won't be posting this to youtube if if i'm wrong on that um but uh yeah this is fun dustin glad you're here yeah Happy where are fun. you uh where are you joining us from uh i'm i'm coming out uh burbank california a crazy <laughs> crazy fun city <laughs> <laughs> it was founded by a dentist funny what? Enough. <laughs> that's yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's the epitome of like yeah what ha what happens in burbank stays in, stays burbank. in burbank exactly i think it was a patent on oswald bit and he was talking about it, it was like founded by a dentist so <laughs> it's very boring and funny. But, yeah but like an 1800s dentist probably right probably yeah, so that that was a wild. That's like a different level then. of dentist. <laughs> that's a. <laughs> I always yeah, that's the like they used a hammer to. They used no. a hammer as anesthesia situation. <laughs> Hardcore dentistry. Yeah. Where um, is everybody else coming from? John. John's in Kansas. I'm in Kansas yeah. City. So is Timmy. Yeah. And Cassandra. Oh, well, Cassandra's answering that. Dustin, where where did you uh, grow up? Uh, I grew up in Miami, Florida. So far away on the other side of uh, the country. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um what, but yeah. What what era what era was your your like your formative years? Is it the nineties? Yes. Yeah, the nineties yeah. kid. Uh early nineties. I was born in like eight six, so like late eighties, I guess. But I remember yeah. things in the nineties. <laughs> That's me me too. Yeah. Um have you always been drawing? That's uh that's all I've ever been good at. That's kind of my uh my shtick is just drawing. <laughs> I'm dyslexic, so you know, reading was not my favorite thing to do, but uh drawing and nice. doing and you know, drawing uh silly drawings of my friends back in the class was you know how I got by through, I, through all <laughs> my studies, I, I guess. I'm also dyslexic. The, the, yeah. The pod is yeah. Drawing I was big fans of dyslexic people. Um, <laughs> I feel like uh, an artist trait. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, uh, I was dyslexic and they were just like looks uh well, no, actually, 
I was bad at math and they were like, looks like this one's going to be a reader. This is in the nineties. So they were like, we're going to put you in the reading program. <laughs> and it was like, <laughs> you're like oh, little, even better. Yeah, yeah. You're like, great. <laughs> um, uh, but uh, when did you, when did you start to realize, like, when did it become apparent that like drawing was like a thing that you accelerated at? I think it was kind of an early age. Like really? I always loved, you know, I, I, I apparently I would watch my mom draw because she can actually draw really well as well. She's a really good. Oh, player. really? And so I would watch her draw. My mom was like, you were always into how you'd be like, draw a face or draw, you know, a flower. And I would just watch her. Um, so, you know, it, it, I guess it started really early on. And then I remember she got these Looney Tunes placemats and had like, looney tunes all around it and i would trace them as like a really little kid and i would kind of copy and try to draw bugs bunny and taz and i think it just kind of started from there you know and then of course you go to school and then they say oh you're the drawer you're the artist in the class so that kind of comes comes to your the validation kind of becomes person part of your personality and before you know it you're uh you're in art school <laughs> <laughs> I my mom was an illustrator and and really did like I she did um like clothing catalogs for a really long time back mm -hmm. in the 70s and so I relate cuz I I didn't um ever uh inherit her powers but I do remember being little and being like draw a dinosaur yeah. and then being like make it bigger. Like literally I was treating her like people treat chat GPT. Now I was like, <laughs> make it bigger, add teeth. Like I was probably a jerk about it. I was just like, no, yeah. not that kind of dinosaur. <laughs> Enhance mom. Enhance. <laughs> Enhance. <Draw. laughs> Enhance. <laughs> yeah. I do remember commanding the drawings, like probably being, you know, a little kid art director. Um, cool. Yeah. So where did you go to school? I went to Ringling College, yeah. uh, art and design over in Sarasota, Florida. Um, was your focus illustration? Yeah, yeah, I was. I was primarily focused on illustration. Like that was my major. Uh, I was always. I think back in um, high school, I kind of was like, I want to do comics and books and stuff like that. So that was really the the goal, the trajectory. Um, and yeah, so I went to school. I was. I remember I applied to SVA Savannah. College of Art and Design, and then Ringling, because I I, did, I wanted to go further out, but I didn't really have the money at the time as a kid, you know, as a student. Right. They weren't they weren't uh <clears throat> they weren't able, so the out of state was kind of hard. But Ringling was in state, and I ended up just deciding to go to the Ringling because I got in, and also like a few of the other colleges just didn't speak to me so much. And then while I was there, I took the Illustration Academy with John for twice. <laughs> I was so, just going to ask, how did you meet John? Yeah. I mean, he, I remember he came and it was a big deal for the upperclassmen, like Ted Kinsella and uh, I think Brooke. Uh, they all went to a uh, book, Oliver, sorry, Brooke Oliveris. They all went to the Illustration Academy and it was like a big deal for the underclassmen. So I think a lot of us had it in our heads. Like, well, if we want to be good, like, like the classmen we look up to, we got to go, <laughs> got to go to the Illustration Academy. So we made a we made a point to go well <laughs> and it was worth it was worth every penny <laughs> john do you remember do you think you remember the first time meeting dustin um i don't know if i can say the very first moment i met him but i uh, i mean it was a long probably that's, quite that's, a long time ago, I, I will say this and i i, I um um I don't want to embarrass Dustin about this at all, but Dust, <laughs> Dustin and I became like instant friends. Yeah. Uh, I had a lot in common with Dustin and I, I, I've always liked Dustin a lot. And I really, um, I don't know. Uh, one of the students I, I became close to. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think, I think we hit it off really quickly. I mean, I remember, really being really excited I, I probably remember more than you do because you probably fielded a thousand questions after your presentation right like showing like illustrate academy you know the whole art department like all the the students are there but i remember bringing my portfolio to you and showing it to you and then like okay hold on one second i went back to my dorm and got this huge freaking ugly painting i was doing <laughs> and then lugged it all the way over there and I had you look at it and you were like 
all right, okay, this is this is kind of cool, I guess. I mean, you're going big, but we had a lot of work to do with it. <laughs> so um I remember that was that was seared into my mind. I was like, oh, I hope he doesn't think, you know, <laughs> I'm some crazy person. <laughs> is that like is this like 2009? 2007. Yeah, yeah. Probably like around that because I started college uh, oh, oh, four. Okay. Graduated oh, 08. Well, so, Justin, yeah. if it makes you feel better, you're still with my crazy did, for did four he? years. <laughs> yeah. Wait, how did you meet John? I'm, I'm a two time Illustration Academy student, oh, too. Two time champ. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, you like seeing? once is not enough. Mm -mm. How many times did you go, Dustin? You I went to went twice. Lucky. Yeah, I think so. Bruno. I think Bruno Sabino from Brazil may have the uh, the record potentially. Yeah, three. I think three, three times. Yeah, I think Scott Anderson's pretty. Yeah. Oh, it could be Scott. Yeah, that would have been fun to start doing like uh, jackets, like uh, <laughs> like golf champs. Yeah, or like or like yeah. SNL. Um, like a flare on the side or whatever how many how many times you've been that type of thing <laughs> yeah. we we used to host the academy this is wild we so we hosted the academy at rockers university in kansas city um and rockers is a, a jesuit university that was located in like kind of a developing neighborhood um there were areas around it that had really 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 high crime rates um and uh it would always be, it was one night I got a call the night, two nights before the illustration Academy started, I get a call from, uh, Kansas city PD who've connected mm -hmm. with Rockhurst, uh, put, like Rockhurst safety. And they're like, we were walking down whatever street. And, uh, we ha heard a report that there were some kids sleeping in cars. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I, and I, I was like, I was scared. Cause I was like, the Academy hasn't even started yet. <laughs> I thought, <laughs> I thought I was on break. And, uh, these, uh, these kids had, had driven in early. Um, this is so funny. They had the wrong date. They, they just didn't, you know, it's art school kids. They had <laughs> the wrong they date. Read? <laughs> they, uh... didn't re they didn't read the extensive, uh, promotional material, just everything. And so they were there a couple of days early and they didn't know what to do. And I, I literally was like, they were like, they, so the school is actually the school is, it's an amazing school. They were just like, great. You're here for the Academy. And they just put them up in dorms like that night. Oh, um, that's nice. um, but then I showed up the next day to like register them. And they were like, they had not signed up. They were just like, we just came. Oh. It was two people. They just came and were like, I want to enroll. <laughs> what? Wow. Yeah. Yeah, it was like it was like what I was like ah, we're gonna do it, but don't ever do this to anyone else ever again. Oh my God. <laughs> I was like, I was like, this this is not how you do things like they this. really didn't read any of the the stuff. No, I mean <laughs> I love talking about wild academy registration stories. It's so funny. <laughs> um it it's you know some of the i've been asked those are some of the wildest questions i've ever been asked <laughs> <laughs> is is from parents and students of people planning to attend the academy last and, minute uh <laughs> most of them are just like funny you know my favorite question ever asked it was asked by a mother i can't remember if it was a mother or a grandmother that was sending it's a grandmother. I remember yeah. it vividly. <laughs> <laughs> I know exactly what story you're about to tell. <laughs> Will my son need a bathing suit? <laughs> and I, was like, I was like, John, are we going to have to invest in one of those blobs that we put on a lake for this thing? Definitely. Definitely. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like gonna, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like this. I already feel like more of a camp counselor than I've ever wanted to feel in my life. <laughs> Uh, yeah. It's a wild environment for the academy yeah. too. Like it's there's so much energy. Um, it's really exciting. It it is a bit wackadoo just with all the ideas and the excitement. That uh, yeah, none of this. Cassandra, you you probably were part of it where it was much more like you are fully. It it, it <laughs> it's just like all right, come to the lessons, 
you figure everything else out on your own, right? <laughs> well, well, like, Cassandra yeah. had a they, they had an edge because it was part of it was on the campus she was going to. Yeah, so oh, I didn't yeah. have to travel to go there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, same with Dustin. Oh, so in our situation, one hundred percent of students had no association with rockers. Right. So oh, okay. they were all they were all new to the environment that they were in. So it was like, you know, 70 people being like, where should I go get food tonight? And 70 people being like, and me being like, please, please don't go to this. There is a, there was a bar that was five blocks away. It was the closest bar. It was called, it's no longer in business because mm -hmm. too many, too many people got stabbed at Oh it. my gosh. Um, really? It was called Bob's in motion. It, it was a, um, yeah, it was called, it was called Bob's in motion and it was a 30 years and over bar. What? You ever heard of that? Yeah. No. no. And so I thought, I thought surely, cause I had read about it and, uh, I'd asked rocker staff, you know, like, what would you recommend? You know, I just asked the school, like, how should we handle like campus safety? And they were like, just tell them not to go to Bob's in motion. And, uh, and I was like, oh, it's 30 years and over. That'll be fine. And then it was just like immediately, um, Michael Polakowski from CCS. I was like, how was it last night? And he was like, we went to this amazing bar. It was called Bob's in Motion. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go, go there, please. I was like, That's rising? Stress yeah. rising? <laughs> yeah, I was like, uh, please don't ever do that again. But no, my favorite leading up to the Academy was uh, someone was considering signing up. They kind of wanted to know all of the refund policies and whatnot. And, you know, whenever you're hosting a live event, that's a pretty tricky thing to navigate. And one of their concerns was uh, tornadoes in, in the state of Kansas. Oh, right? they were like the East Coast or West Coast. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. I don't remember where they were from, but they were like, I just want to know, like, how dangerous is it to be like in that area during tornado like be in tornado alley during that time and you know and i i was like i i really don't think that that's a variable that should be part of your decision <laughs> like i was like i've lived in Kansas city my whole life i've actually never seen a tornado in my whole life oh really um, yeah no i i mean john have you uh i have but but uh, but nowhere near a city. colorado <laughs> <laughs> oh wow <laughs> yeah okay so so I was like, I, I've never seen one before. So I, I, and and I go, and I, I don't know of a single one that's notable that was in the city ever. Um, I'm sure there's something, but I, I mean, it's just not my lifetime. Um, and they go, okay, well, it would just make me feel better. Do you think you would be able to, if there was a tornado and it, and it hit the Academy, could you give me, would you be able to give us a full refund? <laughs> and i just was like i was thinking i thought about it briefly in my head and i was just like i mean that's just gonna yeah sure <laughs> i was just like i was just like you'll be dealing that's gonna be the least of your problem you'll, you'll be dealing yeah. with uh timmy and the trayvon and english estates <laughs> yeah um but uh so yeah, I, I always thought that was such a funny question. Just being like, if your whole company gets wiped out by a tornado, will you be issuing refunds? Yeah, yeah. I think the refund is the least of your worries. Yeah, yeah. No, we'll make sure that it happens. So we'll be 24 hours. Money will be back in your pocket. Well, um, well, you know, the same thing happens with, you know, my family on the East Coast and South America, right. you know, asking about the earthquakes here on the West Coast. You know, did you feel like I'll get text messages daily? Like, did you feel that? <laughs> the earthquake and i was like i was sleeping through it i don't know i don't yeah. know what you're talking about and then vice versa like if i tell people i'm from florida like the hurt you know currently the hurricanes happening yeah. over there, but usually people are like freaked out about the concept of hurricanes and right uh, you know i guess i'm just kind of used to it <laughs> there is a so. lot more things to be worried about on Ringling's campus than Hurricanes. <laughs> it's yeah. off of Ringling's campus. Yeah. It was uh maybe not today, but other no, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um I just opened up the chat to the uh attendees, everybody. Um so if if you want to let us know where you're where you're tuning in from and uh what materials you're using, please use the chat.
And if anybody's tuning in from Florida, man, I hope you're staying safe. Yeah, absolutely. Also, toglet to everyone, not just painless. Um, what materials are everybody using tonight? Dustin, start with you. Um, so tonight we're going super traditional. We're using graphite, <laughs> graphite pencil. Yeah. I've been on, on a graphite kick for a long for a while. Um, using the Black Wings, classic uh, animator, I guess. But uh, yeah, I'm always on Photoshop. So I, when you said live drawing, I was like, okay, great. I just want to, I want to feel paper and pencil and wood for a change. Nice. How often do you do that? Honestly, not as often as I'd like anymore. Um, sometimes I've been going to figure drawing, life drawing around here. Really? And it has been kind of nice. Um, I did a lot this summer. And then uh, it just kind of depends on how much energy I have at the end of the day to make the trek through LA traffic to get to like the location where it's at, you know? Um, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, it, I'm, I'm excited to be just drawing with pencil. Like you, you start to miss pencils and pens and things like that after spending so many days in Photoshop. This is really fun what you're doing, Dustin, because I don't know that we've ever had somebody join where they start drawing like multiple iterations of the yeah, same that's figure. Cool. Oh, <laughs> thanks. Um, most of it is just me trying to warm up like, oh yeah, how do I draw with a pencil again? <laughs> what am I doing here? Mm -hmm. I've been uh I've been coloring uh backgrounds this past week. So my mind my mind has been literally in PSD layers and organizing stuff to like make sure it's ready to go overseas. Yeah. You know? So yeah, fun production art. <laughs> have you have you ever gotten like so digital in your head that when you're drawing on paper you do like control alt delete or or, yeah. or or you like touch the paper to like i don't know do in. anything <laughs> yeah. this this motion happens you, you yes i have done all that every time oh my I god i would there. love it i so <laughs> hope we capture that on recording tonight <laughs> undo <laughs> yeah yeah um, so when it comes to drawing multiple heads and like a lot of the times it's like I'm doing like little studies and trying to figure out like get character design wise like what are the shapes that make this face yeah. and you know what am, what am I even drawing what am I even looking at here <laughs> right let's see Cassandra's painting by yep. the way Cassandra, your work is amazing I was I was I was checking it out earlier today um beautiful renderings of animals and very uh you know beautifully <laughs> renaissance almost <laughs> art. i love it i take it yeah i like to take the ridiculous and take it as seriously as possible mm -hmm. thank you i'm so glad totally you're here. i was really impressed with all that you're doing that's like your, your your resume just blew me away thank you i appreciate that what cool projects you get to work on do, do you have a favorite Definitely uh, any of the ones I've worked on with Jorge, like Book of Life and um, Samurai, uh, Book of Life, Samurai Jack, and uh, Ninja Turtles for sure. So like those three, I think. Is that like the newest, newest Ninja Turtles movie? Is that that one? Yes. Yeah. Oh, that, that was, was so fun. I loved that. I'm glad you enjoyed it. My I, girls uh, are huge Ninja Turtle fans. What are their favorites? What are their favorite characters? Uh, I think Donatello is their favorite. They always fight over the purple plate because it means they're mm -hmm. Donatello. That is the that is the current favorite, I think. Raphael used to be the one when I was in it. I don't know if Timmy, I don't know if you had it, but yeah, it wasn't was Raphael like kind of the just like the doing his own thing was total goofball. Yeah. Oh no, that's Michelangelo. Yeah. Uh, and I, so they're kind of like, oh, we don't want to be Michelangelo. Like, <laughs> except for when he goes to random dimensions, when he knows his stuff, he otherwise is like the one they're always compensating for. That's awesome. I loved Michelangelo. I you did too. too. I was always the like team Mikey. Yeah. Because you wanted a party. You want a yeah, party. Yeah. He likes pizza and wants to hang out. Yeah. Pretty much what we do in real life. <laughs> yeah. Cassandra, what what are you doing tonight? Material. Oh, wise? I went classic. I almost pulled out my markers, um, but yeah. I decided to stick to cardboard. So it's just regular cardboard um, with GAC 100 on it that I'm doing acrylic paint on. And I'm just seeing if I can find her face. 
what is what did you say gac 100 on it gac 100 so golden gac 100 is like an acrylic polymer that seals the cardboard so that it's clear um but it lets me paint right on top of the cardboard without it soaking in that's really cool yeah i, I love this stuff i want them to sponsor me because i'm like everybody should use it because you can seal your board with it and then gesso on top of it like it's just a really uh smart product it's amazing Oh yeah, I've I've actually never heard of it. Is that newer? Um, newish. Newish, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, there's like other brand versions of it, but it's really great if you ever use masonite because masonite has stuff in it, so to keep mm -hmm. it from leaching into your painting. Because a lot of the paintings that turn yellow over time, often it's not the paint; it's in fact the the substrate you're working on. So yeah. if you put two layers of GAC down and then gesso on top of it, you won't have that issue. So I'm just a big proponent on like archivability of everything. And yeah, John's like, I John's ears melt off about my talks on that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Dustin, as I told you before, do not mm -hmm. mention anything being, you know, archival or anything with kids <laughs> in the room. <mouth. laughs> Otherwise, apparently you weren't listening. <laughs> someone, asked, someone asked, does that keep the cardboard archival? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It would seal the cardboard too. Do you do it front I mean, and you back? need to you seal the back. edges and the back too if you're really focused on that. Nice. Everybody John. pay attention to Cassandra because she knows what she's talking about. Yeah. <laughs> John, what it what's uh well, I haven't changed my camera because I was. Yeah, gonna... we should wait till you change your camera later. Yeah, I'll talk about okay, it. Then. People can see what they're doing. Um, should we move on to the next pose and end your segment? Sure. All right, everybody, please post, post your work. To... And I'll do it. Yeah, uh, please post your work to Instagram. Uh, we're going to check it out at the end of the night. It's hashtag drawing hive, hashtag drawing hive, uh, two, two, three. Yeah, two, two, three. Drawing hive, two, two, three, and at visual arts passage. We're gonna check it out at the end of the night. Don't wait until the last pose. Um, it it just never works when you do that. Um, no. John, as I, I mentioned, sound effects are are down okay. tonight. I'm gonna have to reshare and do all that stuff too. So um, I'll yeah. just I'll just go to it. Yeah. Am I sure? Yeah, it looks great. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm gonna do full screen here in just a second. As soon as I can. Come on, don't do this to me. <laughs> please no, please no. Enter full screen. Enter full screen. Down, down, down. Got it, got it, got it. <laughs> Still didn't do it though. Yeah, no. You're gonna need to unshare and share again. Oh man. For anybody, while John does that, anybody wants to know, I am still working on my magic trick for a final Halloween episode. I'm so excited. I've been sending Cassandra how uh magic ideas mm -hmm. <laughs> so far none of them are possible for me to learn <laughs> uh, the last one you sent me my girls were sitting next to me when i was watching it and they're like oh my gosh <laughs> yeah it was, like, it was it was mind-blowing it'd be like if i was like john now look in your wallet <laughs> yeah uh, yeah when he was like and then look at the cell phone picture and the girl yeah. like, how is that even possible yeah <laughs> yeah so Dustin, I tried to hire a mentalist to come in for a Halloween really? episode. Yeah. And uh, I really hyped it up. And uh, I, for a brief moment, we had somebody on the line and then uh, they were concerned that, um, that our viewers would maybe, um, cause I was like, we won't record it. How about that? And they were like, well, your <laughs> viewers might rip it. And they wanted, <laughs> they wanted more than what the drawing I budget has. <laughs> uh -huh. um, see, see. Yeah, so unfortunately, I'm going to be the mentalist. John, are you still running into issues? Sorry. I'm running into all kinds of issues here. It won't let me do it. Huh. Give me one more time. I'm going to get take another swing here. Hold on. Yeah, it should. It should. Since it worked earlier, I think you'd be able to do it. So, Dustin, if you didn't realize, if we don't have any kind of technical issue, something's wrong with our episode. It's part of our charm. We like to show that we're yeah. humans really making the yeah. magic happen live. <laughs> yeah, which this is very much going to be um, what my magic trick will be like. <laughs> so yeah, one episode where everything works seemlessly. Yeah, we 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 question it the whole time and say no. something dramatic. I literally, I'm going to be like Cassandra, pick a card, and then she'll pick it, and I'll be like, "Am I there?" 
Yeah, it looks yes, great. you did it. All right, Perfect. let's go. All right, hey, I got a, I got one other problem here. Is I got, I'm holding a whole bunch of crayons. <laughs> All right, well, here's your intro. Uh, um, so here's tonight, the, yeah, uh, I was thinking about okay, we're doing witches, and back somewhere back in my brain, I remember seeing a bunch of paintings of witches and some very dark paintings by this guy. Oh, perfect. Ooh. And um, you'll you'll see where I get there and how I get there, but it's it's going to be, uh, this is uh, 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 Francisco de Goya, uh, mm -hmm. mostly known as Goya. Um, he is a uh, 18th century uh, Spanish painter uh, born March, uh, in March 1746, died April 1828. Spanish painter, met, lived a large part of his life in Spain, navigated wars, uh, and ended up in uh, Bordeaux, France, is where he died at the end of his life. But um, he was a romantic painter. Uh, I think one of the, the really most interesting things that I read that, you know, somebody said this really in a, in a really nice way is uh, he's often referred to as the last of the old masters, mm. the first of the modernists. And I think that's a really great way to look at it. And you can see he painted for King and Country uh, a large part of his life and was magnificent with facilitation, obviously, uh, obviously heavy, heavily influenced by um, Diego Velazquez. Um, but was doing what artists did at the time, king and country, king and church. Um, and he, he did a lot of that kind of followed, played by the rules <laughs> and, uh, midlife, he had a, they, they, an unknown is what they, how they describe it as an unknown disease that left him deaf. And it really changed his perspective on how he saw the world. And so, and, and also the accumulation of the experience of living through wars. The guy was amazing. I mean, really great painter, no doubt about that. But things went from pretty <laughs> and happy. <laughs> and boy, did it take a turn. <laughs> Yeah, it did. <laughs> <laughs> so sure. I, I'm still in the happy go lucky of um, uh, Goya period here. And oh, he did, he was phenomenal uh, uh, etchings too. I love these things. I love this. Look at the shape design in these when they're just broken. They look, these are just like awesome three value thumbnails. Just beautiful. Mm -hmm. And you can see in the etchings here. You know, horrors of war. Things are starting to change a little bit. Just a little. Getting more complicated. Yeah. Life is not all roses. But man, that <laughs> is beautifully done, though. Yeah. And then... Oh, these these things are wonderful, man. Mm -hmm. they, they're so beautifully done. Wow. I think Howard Pyle looked at that. <laughs> For sure. And see Wyeth. And then some of his, you know, kind of the ravage war toward stuff towards the end uh, of the king and country thing. And then this is for you, Timmy. Hey, does that align? <laughs> it looks no. like Charlie. Yeah, does it align with our subject matter tonight? It is. <laughs> and he did. Um, uh, there was, I think I had this after the you know the 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 war torn things. Um, he really focused, he did a wide variety of paintings concerned with insanity, mental asylums, witches, fantastical creatures, and religious and political corruption. And so Some got, light stuff. <laughs> so we got witches, witches in the room. Wow. Beautiful. 
Yeah, I mean, this is, I mean, this is really relates, you know, if anybody of you ever looked at the painter Diego Velazquez, you know, just the phenomenal uh, brushwork that every, everybody kind of looks at him as just a magnificent, you know, handler of oil paint. Here's another, look at the goat's head here. I like the dancing donkeys. Yeah. I mean, that literally looks like a, a frame from the witch. Yeah. Okay, this is the most interesting thing. The black paint. And th this this is really wild. And I don't think he ever intended anybody to ever see these paintings. Uh, he moved into... Um, uh, uh, it was called Quinta del Sorda, which means House of the Deaf Man. He moved into this house uh, 1819 to 1823, four years that he was there. And he did all these paintings on the walls, on plaster, painted directly on the walls. He never meant for anybody to really ever see them. He didn't do them for display. And they oh. were wild. Yeah. It's horrific. Mm. Yeah. Wow. The only 14 paintings that were that were salvageable. Incredibly narrative. Mm -hmm. So well designed too. Yeah. I mean, the guy was uh, an amazing artist. Had had something to say. I find the one on the left really fascinating. It's a, a, a drowning dog. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Poor baby. Yeah, that's what I thought. Mm -hmm. But think of how many painters he influenced. Mm -hmm. You can see it. I mean, you can even see like Homer showing up here. Okay, and I think it might be the last of these, but this was the house. And this is what this stuff looked like. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And they just they just cut the walls out. Isn't that crazy? Mm -hmm. Just painted straight on the walls. That's so cool. Now, I wonder if I, I assume, because they said it was directly on the plaster, is one of the things that they, but they, they removed them. And however they curated, I have no idea. I thought that, I, I thought that I read that they somehow were able to put them on canvas. That's insane. Yeah. They're spookier like this. Mm -hmm. So metal. Yeah. Just, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, just, just, just think of the guy, you know, he's deaf, he's totally isolated, has uh, uh, very few visitors. And He's just a lot left alone as his, with his own devices, and so he does all these paintings on these walls. No, it's just it's just crazy. Anyway, that's my that's my talk, my spiel for tonight. That's a good one, very good one. Thank you, John. Goya. Goya. I love that descriptor, like one of the last masters and one of the first modernists. Like that that's yeah. the perfect way to describe him. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, along the way, he worked in like the Rococo, Rococo uh, uh, style of doing all of all of the, you know, things for uh, the elite, the the um, the king and, you know, all of the, the society. Um, he did tapestries that way. Um, 
but it really um uh it really evolved <laughs> mm -hmm. so cool yeah yeah he was really it seems like he was a real bridge between that era sunsetting that artist era to the next one the modern era it's very cool let's see i have to uh here's a co compliment for you john someone said that's the first time i've had to stop drawing and soak the work hey. in uh, there you go cool. and they said they're new they're they're pretty new new here so so am i welcome <laughs> <laughs> john can we uh learn a bit about what you're doing tonight material wise well i'm kind of learning a little bit about it too <laughs> uh, I I drew this, and uh, let me grab grab the materials I, in my hand. I drew this with these are oil crayons, crepas, and um, I don't think there's any. Uh, they're oil pastels. I don't think I have any. That, I don't have any really soft sennelliers here yet. Your web, might. John, your webcam's getting like really blown out, and I'm wondering if maybe you just block the lens for a second and. Uh... Yeah. Let's see if we can, and then just uncover it. You got to unblock it. <laughs> oh, that made it worse. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. A major improvement, actually. Yeah, yeah. I was like, you know, what would make this nicer is if I blurred it. You know what I'll do? I'll make your screen smaller. <laughs> yeah, hold on a second. Yeah, sorry. Thanks, Timmy. That's better. Here we go. All right. Here we go. I, I'm working on a, a mid tone, like a. Uh, Kind of, it's a little bit more purple than it actually shows up there. It's kind of a got a, a little bit of a cool red to it, um, and I just kind of blocked. I did the drawing with a black crayon, and now I'm just taking some dry brush oil paint and working back into it. Going to flatten some of it out. Don't know how far I'll take. You know, how far I'll go with that, but. Uh, And then I can come back in and uh, I'll paint. Let's see if I can do, wasn't planning to go there yet, but I'll um, come back into like the green with some oil paint. And kind of flatten it out a bit. And then I can draw back on top of it with um, come back into it with the oil crayons. Um, it needs to kind of set up just a little bit, but not not it doesn't take very long. 15, 20 minutes and you can be drawing back on top of it. Someone earlier tonight asked for advice on drawing and, and they're, they're working on Charlie the goat. And so I know we've answered this question before, but what, what's something you would, uh, what's some advice you would give to, um, illustrating an animal like that. And I oh. guess maybe an animal in that, um, in that position, cause it's not, you know, uh, direct from the side. I don't know. Bye. You got two good artists that can really help you do it. I'm not one of them. <laughs> Yeah, you are. Dustin, Cassandra, what do you think? <laughs> how, how do you think how do you think you uh tackle Charlie the Goat? It's oh, all about nice. shape. Yeah. Silhouette. Yeah. Look at the silhouette of it all. Um, mm. like so I just, you know, this is not coming from a great place. I'm giving up on this one and moving on because I'm not liking it. But I'm gonna start a new one and I'm gonna I'm gonna look at the silhouette of the figure, whether it's animal or human. I treat them both the same, actually. Um and I'm gonna then just keeping in midtones and neutralize. I'm gonna figure out some of the darks. I'm gonna figure out some of the lights. And I'm just gonna think about things in shapes. And by thinking in shape, it simplifies all of it. And so that you're not thinking about the complexity of it all. Just look at the shape, capture the shape, and slowly hone into the detail. But yeah, just little bits and shapes as you go along. 
Yeah, I mean, I agree with that. It, a lot of the stuff we're doing, you know, you're trying to mimic 3D, a 3D world on a 2D page. And a lot of the times it's easier just to break things down into basic silhouette shapes. Um, you know, de depending on how you're going through it, Cassandra's talking about a very painterly way of going about it where you're, you're blocking in the overall shape, you're carving them out, you know, and making it uh, readable to the eye. Um, the same thing can be said with drawing too. And, and, you know, I guess there's two different versions too. Like if I were to, to, to draw this, this goat, you know, I would try to, you know, I mean, everyone wants to focus on the line stuff, you know, for line art, but you really want to do what she's saying is essentially it's the same principles so of breaking it down. What is the construction? What is the silhouette of what you're drawing? And, you know, make sure it reads clearly. But I like that you spoke from, yeah, like a drawing perspective of the line. Because, you know, Dustin, if you look at his drawing, it is it is just lines, but he's focusing on the shape. He's getting the exterior shape of the goat kind of established before he tries to dig into the major details. So don't, don't try to just focus on one part and expand, because if that one part is wrong, then you're basing it all on that. Think of it as a whole simplified and then you can get more complicated as you go yeah, think about the line think about line lassoing shape yeah i think i think a lot of people get obsessed with the look of the line and they get really into you know the fun the fun part right the they get the dry <laughs> nice, cool big thick thin lines i mean that's 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 the fine, that's like the highlight of, you know, on a painting, you get to do the highlights and all that stuff last. You kind of have to figure out what the hell you're drawing and how you're drawing it. Right. Uh, and there's, I guess there's just two ways of doing, going about it. It's like a line based way where you're kind of using line as just a construction tool. And then, you know, when you're using paint, like Cassandra is, it's in, in you are drawing, you're kind of building this, um, this foundation of shape and you're building on top of it, you know, but no matter what you're doing, generally, you're trying to build volume, I think, you know, and really have feel like these things are setting in on the page. So and it's kind of hard to do, especially with the line art. Like I used to struggle with this too a lot is I used to draw very flat where, you know, I, it, I, it was because I wasn't understanding what I was drawing and why I was drawing it and like why that, you know, how the hoof is sitting on the floor you know, and how the construction of it is, you know, I think those things are really important. And then you can caricature it and do a line art drawing of it. You know, I think a lot of students and, and a lot of other uh, artists like tend to draw very flat because, and I used to do this just because I wasn't really understanding what I was drawing. I was just, I was drawing the symbol of that thing, if that makes sense. Right. Sorry if I just rambled. No, no that's I, that's that's great, Dustin. As an outsider looking in, I was also going to think like, well, like if you get too caught up in the detail, and like details are infinite. Like you mm -hmm. can you can just keep zooming in and zooming in and zooming in, and I can see how it would just start with the shape. Also, like I think for I personally find that sometimes drawing small also helps me. So, if, you know, when you draw bigger, you make bigger mistakes. And if you draw a little smaller, you can make little smaller mistakes. And, you know, you don't feel so bad about yourself. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's pretty funny. <laughs> you don't feel. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just trying to protect my ego, man. <laughs> yeah. You just got to keep the, the scope of this problem smaller. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I. I'm, I'm Dustin, I'm, I'm interested in, in, uh, in some of the creatives that you've worked with. You've crossed paths with some pretty interesting people. Would you mind, is it possible for you to share some of the, I'm going to ask you to name drop some of the people that you've worked with because haven't you shared offices with some, some pretty interesting people? Yeah. I mean, uh, I've been very lucky and fortunate. I think that's part, I think it's the best part of working in film and, you know, animation, entertainment industry is you get to work with like, you'll have like a legend just come sit in town next to you and you get to like pick their brain about, you know, what was it like when you were working on, you know, such and mm -hmm. such. 
Um, but yeah, I, I, you know, Jorge Gutierrez, notable, most notable person I've worked with, uh, and Gandhi Tartakovsky, like I've had a, you know, a brief run on Samurai Jack with him and it was amazing to sit down with them and, and see how they think like Jorge and I are, yeah. are friends and I always, he always gives me like a front row seat to his like idea, you know, we're working on characters back and forth. I get to see how he thinks about things and the creative, how he puts himself into the work. Um, that's always been the most fascinating part of the process to me is even though we're doing this, like, you know, commercial art for a film and it's, it's for a, the idea is it's for a uh, entertainment purposes for like a greater project artists even at, at the production level still put a put a piece of them inside the artwork and to me that's my favorite part about like working in-house with people and, and seeing how they do it that's so like, cool yeah i've been trying to think of uh other noteworthy people there's a ton and i was just gonna say is this a this might be a shallow question i might be wrong but at one point, did you work within like the same hemisphere as Seth Rogen? Okay, so I worked on the same project as Seth okay. Rogen. I never met him. Um, a good okay. buddy got to meet him because he was the production designer on the I movie. See. But uh, no, I never. They don't. Okay. They don't concern themselves with us peasants. Hollywood <laughs> 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 yeah. elite, so to speak. No, I mean, yeah. but. He was yeah, very cool, apparently, and they they enjoyed talking to him and working with him and stuff. Yeah, but um, no, unfortunately not. But I have seen some famous people now and again, you know, walking. Through I, the yeah, that's how shallow I am. I'm just like, what are some of the celebrities you've met? <laughs> um, oh, I'm here for it. I love it. Yeah. Okay, let's see celebrities. Um, oh, I've, you don't have to do that. We're we're. I'm totally happy talking about artists, but I. Oh, I, I want to hear it. Okay, do it for Cassandra. Cassandra <laughs> asked. <laughs> Just for oh, yeah. the record, let it show that Cassandra asked this question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Um, I've seen uh, uh, Luke and um, <clears throat> what's it called? Uh, I've seen Woody Harrelson. I've seen. Um, That's a big one. Uh, uh, Luke, was it also? Uh, how can I forget? Are these just like are wedding these just crashers? Uh, what was that? Sorry. Say it the again. guy from Wedding Crashers. Oh, uh, Luke Owen Luke Wilson. Wilson. Owen Wilson. Yes, yeah. thank you. I'm so sorry. So are these Owen just uh, these aren't just like street sightings, right? These no, no, no. Special <laughs> sightings. <laughs> they were like actually. They're actually the, the craziest thing that ever happened to me though was I was listening to I love the Roots album, uh, the band, yeah. and I was listening to a, a Roots song. I think it had Erica Badu on it, or it's a mashup version of it. I don't really remember, but Erica Badu walked past my desk while I was listening to it. No I was like, way. Real and I was like, what in the world is happening? I mean, she wasn't there for me. She was just getting a tour of the studio. And I think uh -huh. they were trying to entice her to do her music video with us at the time in, in Dallas. But that was wow. pretty surreal. Um, uh, Jessica Alba, I've seen her walk through the studio at one point. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, there's, been a, there's been quite a few that like, but yeah. they're always like, don't go near them, leave them alone, don't look them in the eye. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Zoe De Chanel, uh, uh, Zoe, sorry, Zoe Zeldana. Sorry, I'm terrible yeah. with names if you haven't noticed. Like, I'm really <laughs> no, this, is cool. this is not something that happens in my world, so I'm just enjoying this. <laughs> been, and just, just for posterity for the recording, I should say this. I have been trying to disable the effect that when somebody's hand is upside down, it doesn't make a, a thumbs down bubble on the Zoom. Zoom, Dustin, I, Dustin and I were talking earlier today. These companies, Zoom, whether it be Zoom or Apple, are all trying to create these effects for video conferencing that are absurd. Mm -hmm. Nobody needs them or <laughs> wants them. <laughs> <laughs> and I've been in I've been in meetings that are what I would call high stakes, where I say, all right, goodbye. And then I give a peace sign and it does like a like a unicorn goes across the screen. And, like, <laughs> and you're just like, and then they're just like, wow, that was weird. Why does that guy have like a setting on his <laughs> you know? And it, yeah, you know, you're like just getting to know these people, you know, like for like a business meeting, and it's just like, no, this doesn't need to be like TikTok. <laughs> Like, you know, <laughs> yeah, try, try a different method. 
this is th- that stuff was looking so much fun. So now you're going small. Yeah, like- pencil wasn't working out. I wasn't really feeling it. See if we can fix my ego. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. The, uh, what are you trying to do? I had to start over. What are, what are, what are your, what's your tool belt you're grabbing right now? So this is my, my personal sketchbook that I use for like sketching throughout, um, you know, on site. Like I'll take this with me to like the park or, you know, what have you. Oh, that's and, awesome. Thank you. I like to use what that. What kind of pen is, do you use for that? Uh, I use the Zebra. It's probably my favorite. The oh, Zebra. Let's see if you can see it on there. It's like two or two or three of them. Um, these Tombos to kind of lay down like a nice basic, you know, shape. Uh, and sometimes I'll go in there with like these cool brush pens I got. They got I get them all off Jet Pens, which is this really cool site that has a ton of Japanese uh, stationery. Wow. Uh, and of course, just like basic microns and stuff. This thing has seen better days. That's but, cool. So yeah. That's, these, these are the ones I use on the day-to-day for myself. If anything, I think if you want to get better at drawing, one of the things I recommend anybody is, besides drawing from life, draw sculptures. Like, these are some Remington sculptures. And, like, it's, I don't know, you just learn a ton from copying uh, actual sculptures. Because the design's already there. You just get to, like, play with form. Oops, sorry. Hit the screen. Last year, uh, Dustin, I made a, a foundation video and I drew, uh, I did some demos from sculptures and I had a blast. <laughs> it was it was really, really fun to do. I encourage so, anybody to pay attention to what Dustin's saying. It's, uh, yeah. I've never done it. Well, I did it once in college, but I'd never done it. I hadn't done it in in years and i really had fun doing it it almost takes some of the prep work out of it if that makes sense like you don't have to design anything it's just already good (laughs) usually well and then it lets you like the way that the dimensions in a sculpture is set up it 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 helps you understand form yes i have a number of uh this was said to me a couple of times by character designers. These are characters in the in the game industry, uh, character uh, the design characters of the game industry, and they were learning uh, they were learning Blender at the time and talked about the value of learning 3D. They said it helped their drawing so much because it helped them think in three dimension while they were drawing. But that's 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 pretty cool. Um, a, uh, I can definitely echo that same sentiment. Um, I took a sculpture class uh, not too long ago, or a few years back, actually, and it it made me a fundamentally better drawer, draftsman after, like, I spent time making something in 3D. Um, and I've been trying to learn Blender as well, and that also has helped me understand, like, what's going on in 3D space when you're drawing something and when you're, when you're painting something. It has helped. It's been very beneficial. So I agree with them. It's fun. So you're tackling the goat. I have to look. I have a... which everybody, we should be moving on to our third and final. It's the long one. Um, Obviously, you do whatever you want. If you haven't learned that yet (laughs) about Drawing Hive, (laughs) there are no rules. But um, I like it when people follow the Drawing Hive rules. So please post your work to Instagram. It's hashtag Drawing Hive, hashtag Drawing Hive 223 and Average Large Passage. We're going to check it out at the end of the night. I grew up with a family goat. In uh, I grew up on a farm, basically in Peculiar. I was born in Peculiar, Missouri. <laughs> you were okay. Yeah, and we had a goat. 
and the goat was not named Charlie. The goat was named not very original goat name. I bet you can guess it. Billy. Billy, Billy. the goat. It was Billy the goat. And uh, Billy, my parents were um, like at the time, they could not rub two pennies together. I mean, very, very difficult time. And this is really sad, actually. It's a sad, but it becomes a very funny story. They became so desperate for money that they had to sell Billy the goat to their neighbor. It's really sad. And their neighbor like raised goats um, for slaughter. So it was a te- like a horrible, I mean, can you imagine? Like, like, I mean, if I got a goat, the goat would just become my dog like immediately. <laughs> like, um, And so they sold the goat and they would go visit. Like they were, this is maybe they didn't visit regularly. They were, they were driving home and it's like a whole rural area. Nothing's out there anywhere. And they're like, we should go visit Billy, the goat. <laughs> and they go and they go to the their neighbor. Who, when I say their neighbor, this, is, this guy lived like three miles away. Like, like, and they went and they, uh, and my parents are city people that were, they were like cosplaying in the country. <laughs> and they went to go visit Billy, the goat. And so they just drove to this guy's property and uh and uh there's a large field where all the goats are and i don't know if you've ever been around goats but if you go up to a fence and goats are there especially if goats are used to being fed by humans they will swarm right so my parents Mm -hmm. go up to the fence all the goats come up to the fence and they can see billy like in the back and they pretty much all the goats like figure out like these people don't have food And they all, all the goats kind of drift away and start leaving slowly. And then finally, it was just like them on this hill looking across this fence. And it was just Billy alone staring at them, (laughs) which is, I mean, devastating, right? (laughs) I mean, just like, oh my God. And my dad was like, I'm getting Billy back. (laughs) (laughs) And my dad hopped the fence and they stole Billy back. Wow. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It was just a full blown crime. Yeah. They stole, (laughs) they, they uh, broke Billy out of uh, what was soon to be Billy's, uh, you know, uh, demise. Uh Uh, But what's funny is they had like an old Miata convertible. (laughs) 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 They they shoved this goat in the back of it. It's so funny. I love it. I don't know. Did I mean I, I feel silly asking this because your dad always gets away with it, but did he get caught? No, he didn't get caught. Um, my dad had that my dad's the type of type of guy that would get caught and then still get away with it. Yeah. <laughs> you know? He is. He really is. Um, yeah, yeah. He had some he had some pretty good, um, pretty solid little schemes that he ran (laughs) back in the day when he was like, you know, we, between you, when you're between a rock and a hard place, you know, he always knew how to get out of a situation or, um, in like the coolest way, not like in a, not like in a weird, like, Oh, he's a grifter. Just like, like (laughs) cool way, you know? Um, like so anyways, yeah. The goat farm did fine. (laughs) They didn't, they didn't look silly. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever happened to Billy? Did he? Um, I think Billy lives? lived like a long goat life, you know? <laughs> yeah. Billy, Billy lived like happily ever. But I always loved that. My mom said we were standing on that hill and it, that was that goat alone. And I knew your dad was like, there's no way we're leaving this place without Billy right now. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Goats are fun. I like goats. I, you guys ever been around goats? They're yeah. Wild. They're wild i mean outside of like a petting zoo the, the the biggest issue they had with billy um and i think what you know when it because money became a big problem and then and then it was the behavior of billy they billy was just a wild card and the biggest issue was if people would visit my parents which they became the people i think this is why they left the country they became the people that would be like come on come out and see us <laughs> you know and like nobody wants to drive like 45 minutes <laughs> right <laughs> But they would park, someone would park in the front house and they didn't like fence Billy or in or anything. Billy was just like a wild Roman goat. And Billy made a habit of if you parked in front of their house, he would just come and get on the hood of your car and just like stomp it. No. (laughs) He would just like, he would just like destroy cars. (laughs) 
which is, I mean, that's pretty much what goats do. They just destroy and eat everything in their path. He was a menace, Billy. Yeah. Someone said selling a goat and swiping back is quite a grift. Yeah, it was a grift. But it wasn't like intentional out the gate. You know, <laughs> let's not throw rocks. Let's whatever. The glass house thing. <laughs> <laughs> crime of passion. Yeah, it's a crime of passion. Crime of passion, yeah. The con, you know, yeah. you save the goat, the family goat. Yeah, you know what? I bet he made it up for it at some point. <laughs> yeah. No. Have you guys ever had any like kind of unusual pets? I uh dog not not dogs or cats. Well we had a we had an unusual pet for a little bit, but like it was under unusual circum circumstances. We had um one of those beautiful uh cockatoos like fly into our house one day back home and really kept it, you know, because this if this thing's like a was definitely one of those like beautiful white expensive mm -hmm. ones that like, could mimic everything and say everything and i remember being a kid and it like flew in the house and my, my mom was like we gotta keep it this thing's it's worth like hundreds of dollars you know at the time yeah. and we had it for like three weeks and my dad isn't the one who has the most patience and we came home one day and it was gone and i was like what happened he's like i let it go and i was like why he's like it wouldn't shut up <laughs> and I'm like, Dude, it was so expensive. Like, why would you let that thing go? But he was like, it just would not stop talking and it just bothered him. <laughs> that's funny. So I was devastated. That was in, and that was in Florida, right? Yeah, it was in Florida. <laughs> oh, that's got to be like capital of weird pets, right? Oh. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> right? Weird anacondas, people having weird, they're the weird stuff in Florida. Oh, I can't imagine what the airport, the airport like, seizure is of like strange pets <laughs> right? pets going in and out of florida <laughs> yeah yeah i never uh had pets in the reptile that were reptiles i do have some anxiety because years many years ago i was in new york visiting a um a friend of my parents and they had a um they had a parrot they had two parrots that were um, fairly young parrots. I think they were like 10 years old. Um, and the individuals that had the parrot were much older, um, like in their 70s at the time. And this was 10 years ago or 10 or 12 years ago. It was probably 10 years ago. Um, and at the time, they were like, we're, we've been required to – do this thing where we have to have someone who will because of our age by new york law we have to have someone who will inherit our parents when we pass away and i was just in town and they were like will you become like the will you inherit our parents oh my gosh and i was like 22 and i was like hell yeah <laughs> of course and now i just keep i always think about it and i like google their names to see like like how healthy they are because <laughs> oh. i'm like this parrot is coming my way like is that still gonna happen do you think i don't know i don't know to, there's a part of me that just thinks there's no way it's been so long somebody else they they saw a better opportunity but i like signed a paper and put mm -hmm. my name my phone number and i haven't changed my phone number since then so did you prepare gianna for the Gianna has no idea about this. <laughs> <laughs> my wife, my wife has no idea what will happen is this is exactly She's what will just going to be one day. Yeah. She comes in and there's a squawk. <laughs> no, this is, there'll be two squawks. That's the, the other issue. It's two parrots. Oh my um, gosh. But what will, this is what will happen is, is we'll like plan to have a kid and then it'll be like, I, I just guarantee we'll be like coming home from the hospital. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's gonna be a month into having a baby. <laughs> yeah, there's gonna be like a New York, like a whatever New York like cockatoo specialist in our living room. <laughs> Being like, you made you made some choices when you were 23, and now you have to live up to them. These are yeah, called live. consequences. <laughs> These are called consequences. If I'm not mistaken, those some of those parents live forever too. Like they will live, they will outlive. Yeah. Yeah, like 60 to 80 years, some of them. Oh, based on like my genealogy, 
I will also have to name someone who will inherit this parent. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I, yeah, I don't know. I, there's a, Cassandra, there's a part of me that just thinks like so few things like follow through after so, like, I think that, I don't know. I just wonder, yeah. I just, I'm assuming it's going to end up with like a nephew or something. You know what I mean? Mm hmm. I, I don't know. You know what they say about assumptions. It makes an yeah. ass out of you and me. Yeah. <laughs> it was just, they're just like zany New Yorkers that did it. Oh my gosh. I'm just like waiting for, like, because you're also a Trayvon. So Murphy's Oh, I will loss, take it. I will take Murphy's it. Murphy's loss is these, these guys are going <laughs> to show up on your doorstep <laughs> like in a couple years. <laughs> I will keep the pet for anybody worried i will honor <laughs> my debt <laughs> to the parents <laughs> your 23 year old choices <laughs> like sorry jonna you married my debts <laughs> as well mm -hmm. <laughs> that par parents all lawyered up yeah <laughs> you know richness and uh sickness and health parents at 23 choices you know yeah yeah <laughs> Remember they say, you know, like your past isn't what matters. <laughs> I, I had a friend um, from Mallory I worked with and she had a rabbit and it was given to her by like her ex-boyfriend. And the boyfriend didn't realize what a commitment getting a rabbit was because they live for yeah. a very, very long time. And she's like, you know, this thing lives for like, like 20, 30 years, right? You know, or right. Some, something, you know, egregious like that. And I was just thinking about it. Could you imagine giving someone a gift like that? Like, hey, here's, you know, they never asked for this, but here's the thing you'll have to take care of for the rest of your life. I was thinking of you. So here's, you know, a decade's commitment. Yeah, just a casual <laughs> gift. Your birthday. Yeah, I was thinking about how much you appreciate that, like, hang loose lifestyle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Your ability to leave without having a, a pet sitter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Once the, yeah, once the levees break on that, you, you might as well get 10 rabbits. <laughs> uh, so Dustin, on a, on a more educational note, do you have any projects? You, I, I've been talking with you. It sounds like you've been pretty busy lately. Do you have any projects you, you're allowed to talk about that we could hear about mm -hmm. or you can allude to? I don't have anything that I think can, I can announce. Um, yeah kind of been a little bit of a slow point for right. film and animation so it's things are few and far between i've just kind of been jumping from random show to random freelance gig here and there i think one thing that i worked on is coming out for adult swim soon called oh my god yes mm -hmm. it's a uh it's adult swim cartoon so it's you know very crass and <laughs> over the top but the we i was a background painter on it and you know i'm really proud of the backgrounds we did we did like we had a little time, like three months to kick out these fully painted, rendered, you know, backgrounds. Uh, so that that's coming out soon. I'm just not sure when exactly it'll drop. Um, but yeah, at the moment, that's kind of it. There are other things in the works. <laughs> we're, uh, we're we're discussing other things to to yeah. possibly happen, but for right now, <laughs> that's kind of it. As as a freelancer. Is your experience, especially a freelancer that is like pretty deep into your career, I mean, do you feel like you have to play like businessman, like drum up opportunities, or are you at a point where um you have to like choose your opportunities like smartly? Um it's a little of both, I think. Yeah. Uh, I've been in a very fortunate position. I, I will say this. I have friends who haven't had freelance work and I have been pretty lucky to be consistently working these past two years because it's been I think it'll be almost two years now since Baby Shark was the last full length production that I rolled off of and wow. yeah so I'm kind of rustling up work I'm I'm constantly messaging yeah. friends that I've worked with like hey you know what's going on over yeah. at you know which studio and yeah. it's been really hard because a lot of people aren't in office anymore which right. I have my own opinions on that we should be in office but yeah, you know everything is remote at the moment, so that's kind of made it harder. But you're right; I've had to like put my business hat on and take yeah. on odd jobs that I normally haven't taken on. Like I did a, I did a gig for Paramount, but it was like focus group art 
to like figure out what styles kids like. And so it kind of, yeah, it was, it was kind of cool. Like I got to be producer and build a schedule and do get a friend hired and do things that I normally wasn't used to doing. So yeah, I uh, had to spread my wings a little bit. That had to be kind of fun too, to kind of, you know, zero in on like, what are, what are kids into? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and figuring out how, learning how they do focus group testing, that was actually kind of a learning experience for me. I was like, oh, this is how they, they gauge all and figure out all the data, you know, they have control and then they have, you know, the uh, variables and they, apparently they have like an iPad or some kind of thing for kids to look at. And then the kids kind of choose, you know, they take the little tests. So yeah, it was a, it was a learning experience. It was pretty cool. Are you allowed to say what the conclusion was? Oh, I have no idea. I don't even know if if they've run it yet. I think they said they were going to do it in, like sometime now or in November. Oh, okay. Hopefully. I wasn't sure like if it was a project from a while ago or more current. Oh, yeah, no, I just wrapped it like not too long ago. So hopefully, I hopefully they hit me back and tell me what what the conclusion was. What one yeah, of the most? Well, sorry, Cassandra, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, no, go for it. One of the most common questions that I feel like, um, so John uh, does uh, these portfolio talks at mm. a lot of colleges around the country, and uh, we'll always have a QA. and a These are like juniors and seniors. A lot of them are interested in visual development, illustration, um, paths that might bring them down like the freelance world. But they're mm. all trying to like, they're all trying to break into an industry and like create opportunities for themselves. And one of the most common questions is like, what is a way to like, to like basically network cold, sometimes it's network cold call, like reach out, but just like that aspect of like drumming up business. Like, like when you reach out to someone, do you reach out to people you don't know often? Um, so lately I have been doing that a little more where I just, yeah. email recruiters or, yeah. uh, you know, that kind of stuff. It's never really, if I'm texting someone about work, like say I have a friend who's an art director on something and I'm just like, Hey, yeah. just I'm free. That's yeah. just, I have a personal relationship with the person I've worked with them. Right. Or we know each other well enough that I feel comfortable to do that. Yeah. I think working in-house at a studio affords you networking without intentionally networking. So like I'm making friends on the project and you know, we right. have time and you know, it's all that, all the joys of, of, of working in the bullpen with other artists. And uh, yeah, I think that's kind of the networking that I've kind of done. I mean, I go to Lightbox. I go to, I've been to yeah. CT in the past. It really is hard when you're remote. Getting your foot in the door at some of these studios is probably the most important thing. And one of the paths, depending on which studio you go to, used to be like, oh, you become a production assistant and you just kind of like, you know, work on the production side and kind of meet artists and learn about how they make the cartoon but it's a little harder now that everything is remote um, right but that was that's usually the way i tell most students is like if you want to work in film or animation just get a pa job or get something like that and you know you kind of learn the ropes unless there's like an internship or an, an, i think nick nickelodeon has a program called nick turns where they have nick, right. nick you know in, interns but it's only for uh students i think it's not for if you've graduated, you can't apply. Um, but okay. those are really generally the ways that I would go about it. Uh, I guess, you know, posting online is important. You know, I think that it has its place, but getting your foot in the door and being on the ground with people generally is the best, in my opinion. Yeah. I, I, so I early in my career, I started uh, like my probably 19 to like 25, I was on um like a lot of photo sets that like frequently had not all the time but like pretty frequently had celebrities on them not mm -hmm. like huge celebrities but one of the things i learned was like how simple it was to thrive in that environment and like oftentimes and like network and like kind of climb the ladder and i i quickly learned because i did not go to like i was not a photo student i knew nothing about photography when i ended up on like a major commercial set right Mm -hmm. um, and I learned that it was literally just like, is this, they just needed a body on set. 
who was not going to try and talk to Ricky Fowler, the <laughs> golfer, right? <Yeah. laughs> right. And literally, I remember them being like, and like, I remember somebody pulled me aside, a person that became a good friend of mine, who's like about five, 10 years older than me. He was just like, look, man, if, if you can just be cool to hang out with and just don't talk to the talent or the director, <laughs> um, they, he basically was just like, you just need to like, just like, just like sail, man. And yeah. he was like, and if you try to climb the ladder too fast on like, like really quickly, it's going to be a big turnoff for people. And so he was just like, just be cool, mm -hmm. like chill. You don't need to impress anyone. Just like try to be helpful and, and don't be weird. Yep. And don't like, weird. and, and I know all of this sounds like, oh, you just got to get along with the cool kids. It wasn't like that. It was like, don't, because I've been around the sets where people try to like, they, they try to jump the ladder yeah. and, and yeah. that's like, that's like the most common thing you see on a set or like in a production setting, I think by like when I went on my first set, they basically were like, Hey, this guy's named Matt do everything Matt says. And then Matt was really kind. He was like, look, if you try to jump past me on any of this stuff, it's going to be a huge turnoff to me, but other people too are going to be upset yeah. about it. And he was like, and it's the most common thing I see with everybody that gets in your shoes. And he was like, if you're just cool to hang out with, you will be so rare. <laughs> and <laughs> it's true. It really was like, cause I think some people are just like, okay, I want to be a director. And they're like, so if I want to be a director, I got to go talk to the director today. And like the director does not want to talk to you today. Like nope. they're stressed about today. You know, I, I think, I think a lot of that comes back to this basic things. Like I, I was talking to a couple of my friends who became art directors recently and they were like, key things, answer your email, <laughs> hand in your yeah. work on time, show up on time, you know, uh, do all that kind of basic stuff that, you know, your, your parents told yeah. you to do and you'll be fine. And that, that's, uh, that's the most the important thing. Man, the show up on time is such a, I know we're talking about two different industries as if they're the same, but I do think the principles are the same in many ways. Agreed. It's just like, I mean, the number of times that I've seen a, um, a PA or a camera assistant get not fired, but never hired again, mm -hmm. it has happened because of some of the dumbest reasons where it was yeah. just like, that was so easy for you to avoid. Um, one is like, okay, so showing up five minutes late to any opportunity, that's one thing, right? That, yeah. that is you, whether or not it's true, right? It's you demonstrating, like, I don't really care about your time. That's how it's interpreted, right? Some people just, it's hard to show up early. Like, you know, it's just not built in. But anyway, that's what how it's interpreted. But then the thing you can do worse is show up five minutes late, but have a Starbucks coffee. Yes. <laughs> you're yeah. never gonna get hired ever again yeah starbucks <laughs> is more important than showing up to work on time yeah yeah oh. that's i've seen three people three separate people like basically get blackballed because of an event yep. like that that's a thing that's a real yeah. thing accountability i mean that's that's what the stuff comes down to and i'm not even saying that they couldn't have been talented and like had great careers it's just like that's how fragile it is but also how simple it is <laughs> at the same time. Well, it's also you're just talking yeah. about professionalism, straight up yeah. professionalism and respecting like the hierarchy of of what is already built in. There's somebody else before you that did the work to get into right. this position and if you're trying to go over their heads, like that's just that feels disrespectful. So, sure. I think that is really simple if you think about it. Yeah, so talent in and you can tell me how this relates to your world. In photography, every like person I ever assisted or um was a p you know a PA for or like assist like AD for or anything like that. Well, AD gets more technical and you like kind of need to know your stuff, especially with like mm -hmm. DIT too. But but assisting, like getting your foot in the door opportunities, talent for me in the photo world was never a variable. Um, yeah. the thing that was actually a variable was your interest in doing it, your desire to do it, your dedicate, yeah. like how, 
how fired up you seem to be. And then just your ability to like work with other people. Mm -hmm. um, and it's amazing how many people get cut out of it once that barrier is set. I, I couldn't echo that enough. Like, you know, hard work beats talent kind of thing comes up a lot. And, yeah. you know, I was like, it's hard work beats talent and talent gets lazy. I think sometimes some of the most successful artists I know, they didn't start off as like, the rock star or the most talented artists in the room they were willing to yeah listen to their you know their senior artists and, and staff members and kind of learn alongside them and, and uh, not you know uh respect the chain of command so to speak i think cassandra you, you mentioned this yeah. and mm -hmm. i think i think that goes a long way and, and those people are usually the ones who rise you know through the ranks fairly quickly just by showing up yeah. doing the work and being open to critique and being open to changes and, and, you know, not taking things so personally. Uh, I sometimes see that a little bit, even, you know, in the professional settings where, you know, yeah. we'll get feedback on like a design and the designer or the painter or whatever will get really upset. And I'm like, you know, you got to remember, this isn't your show to make. This is we're we're all making a show for someone else. So we're trying to do the best, you know, insert creator, art director or whatever show trying to make. It's not about your ego. It's not about your, you know, your standing. But, but that kind of stuff really, really speaks volumes, I think, in the professional world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I want to say, like, within six months of me, like, assisting and stuff, eventually if someone there, like, I, I think I would do something. They would be like, they would ask me to do something and I would, like, mess it up, right? Like, I, I would <laughs> yeah. do it wrong because I was inexperienced. I had no, I didn't know anything. Um, I just knew I wanted to do it really bad. And then once they saw me mess up enough, but that they could tell I was like trying mortified. Yeah. They could also tell that I was mortified and embarrassed. And on two separate occasions, really amazing photographers were like, come to my house on Saturday. Yep. We are going to do a little class at my house. Right. And uh, these are people that were like, pretty generous with their time. Uh, one being like Nick Vidros, who I've talked about here, but um, then it became a, okay, I'm going to teach you these things. If you're not listening or you're not trying to learn them well, and then, or if I ask you to do them again, and like, you're not trying to master them, I am going to be annoyed. That was when, when skill was, would yeah. become a problem, right? Like where they would be like, look, we we've tried to teach you this a dozen times. <laughs> you're not trying <laughs> Or I don't know, like you can't just like ride the I really care wave <laughs> mm -hmm. success. Yeah, there's a there's a certain breaking point where you're like, okay, listen, you're not doing it. You're not doing it. But the, the get in the door thing, I do believe like truly I've seen so many people um, get in the door just by, I don't know, doing that. John, we were talking the other week and I, I was I was mentioning that and it's just this like constant I remember being like 20 and just being like, God, if this person could just like know how much I care, they would totally take me under their wing. <laughs> you know, I and think that was should... always my thing. It's just like, how do I communicate to this person? How much I care about this? Yeah. I, I, I can, I remember feeling that way too. It's like, and I think it shows by your actions and your enthusiasm. Um, yeah. I'm sure they knew. <laughs> yeah for anybody because we hear this all the time about like visual development and people talking about jobs in studios or trying to get freelance work like young students just being like no one's hiring or nobody has these opportunities and one thing i would say is just like there there are lulls all the time when i came out of school i was told oh yeah I, I, first of all i came out of school i was an english major and i was like i want to be i want to work on photo sets, I eventually want to get to directing and do like commercial work and I want to work with, and it was just like, oh, you have no skills. You have no experience. <laughs> you don't know anyone. And then I talked with people that had been in the industry and they're like, there's no chance you're going to be at a studio that you're going to find any opportunities. Nobody's hiring ever. Mm. I literally, I just showed up at studios and called, but I called hundreds of studios, but then I found mm -hmm. one studio and they like, they were like, this guy's I, it was the Wades. That was the first studio I was at. And Lynn did, I asked Lindsay, I go, why did you guys hire me? And he goes, we thought you were really weird. 
work in your favor. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, yeah. They go, we thought you were really weird, but you, we could tell you cared a lot. Yeah. So, so I don't know. I, I just think it's a numbers game sometimes. It is. And and I, I have a friend. I mean, he started as the scan station guy, and now he's in charge of, like, a major movie. So, yeah. He just he and he cold called. He was like, "Hey, do you guys take interns?" And the person at on the other line was like, "Sure, you know, you can come in, and then we'll you can assist the artist for a couple hours a week, and kind of yeah. learn, you kind of learn that way." Uh, and yeah, so it, that that's all the success stories I've heard have been similar to yours, where it's just like, "Hey, can I come? <laughs> can I come look?" Yeah, and me? I should be careful. I don't even want to call mine like a success story, but I had the I had I created the opportunity that I wanted. I eventually chose like being like, I don't like this that much once I got about five, six years in. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's interesting. I, I think when you're like in your early twenties and I'm assuming some people listening are looking at the industry, they're looking at opportunities and jobs. The other thing that I ran into often was I ran into people who either formerly had successful careers or were like really good at the thing that I wanted to do but didn't mm-hmm. like fully have a career. And when you ask that type of person, like, what are my, I don't know. There's such a desire to be like, what are my odds? And the truth is no one can answer that. Nope. And, but, but a person who has either failed or really struggled, man, they gravitate so close to being like, you shouldn't even try. Oh yeah. Yeah. Those be some downers. And- yeah. You gotta be careful with that. Cause it'll just ruin your vibe on the whole thing and your energy. And like, I don't know. I I have this weird sense. So I was talking to my friends about it. Like my, my whole career, I've always thought about like, what's going to make me a better artist rather than money or clout or any of those things. Like I've always just been like, Ooh, what are the skills that I'm going to learn out of this thing. So every show I go to, I'm, even if it's something I don't want to do, like I actually tested for a show that I will not name, but I had, the style was not particularly appealing to me, but it was in a different program that I've never used before. And I was like, that actually might be a cool way to learn this program and get paid for it. Mm-hmm. Even though the, the look was abysmal. <laughs> so, you know, I tried to, I tried to think about that you know, in terms of my career. So when I started out, the same thing, I was working in advertising and commercials and I was yeah. not particularly pleased. Like you talk to anybody who knew me that time, they were like, yeah, he was, he was miserable because <laughs> I was not playing yeah. and painting the way I wanted to. And, uh, but it still served yeah. a lot of really good purposes, professionalism, right. showing up on time. And then even now I still do commercial gigs from now and then, cause I kind of miss it oddly enough because it's right. there was something about it was kind of like you're making a little indie film and you're, you're running and gunning and creating something and it's kind of fun even if it is just like a random clorox commercial or something like that yeah yeah that's amazing yeah to me it was the stress that broke me down in the commercial world because <laughs> someone was like someone was like someone was like would you like to work in a creative environment that has the intensity of a an emergency room. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I think when I was 19, for some reason, I was like, hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Oorah, let's go. <laughs> yeah. <Oorah. laughs> it does feel like that though. When you, yeah. uh, when you on a traumatic production, which yeah. is that you and those are your best friends later on. Like I still talk to all the, the artists and, and coworkers that I worked with on some of the more, um, harrowing broad productions in my career and those yeah. are like my best friends like i hang out with those guys all the time <laughs> when you say so i i think i know exactly what you mean when you say a traumatic or harrowing production but mm-hmm. can you you don't have to give a, like a exa- you don't have to name <laughs> names or anything but like oh, what what do you what makes up a what is the makeup of something like a traumatic production or just like a production that's just like i don't know i know exactly what you're talking about <laughs> Well, we we call them shit shows, just like part of my <laughs> French. <laughs> but, um, a lot of the times it's directionless um, shows. Yeah. It's like when you get on a production or it can be commercial, it can be anything, and there's no direction, the client wants it tomorrow, like yesterday, and everybody has to scramble to appease, you know, whoever's like pulling the purse strings. And sometimes there's also shows where you're 
they call it development hell where you're just kind of on a production that's never going to see the light of day and you're just spinning yeah. your wheels. and those productions even if they are um stressful they are kind of really fun because uh i don't know like a ride or die moment yeah out. i know it's like you're in the foxhole with your other friends and then you guys are making terrible jokes and, <laughs> and kind of like getting through the day trying to make this this terrible movie or show or commercial and those are the those are the times that are really fun looking back in, in the moment it's never the case but when you're on it it's a lot of fun oh yeah i get that is are are those i mean that that happens over a period of for you months right it depends sometimes a right. commercial could be like a month you know yeah. or, a, or a development movie could be like years uh, i've only had like maybe like the longest one that was just kind of in development hell where it wasn't really kind of coming together until the last minute was it's probably like two years i think we were just kind yeah. of working on this thing and it wasn't going anywhere and then it finally took uh, it went to like three directors i think oh wow yeah so i always read about like that just happening but it must be hard to be a part of the the crew going through that it, it can be it can be very disheartening especially when you work like say a year on stuff and then a new director comes in and it's like well throw it all away and you gotta <laughs> dump all your paintings and i've know. got fresh ideas yeah a complete different direction oh, oh my gosh yeah <laughs> um you take it in stride you learn how to like handle that uh, after a couple of years you're like oh okay cool had fun with that put it to the yeah. side get a thicker skin mm-hmm <laughs> yeah i would i would work with like seasoned like like stage like stage hands and stuff yeah like guys that would do like like prop props and i know a guy named De i shouldn't say his full name <laughs> but, but protect, protect your sources good catch there yeah, but i worked <laughs> uh with him for many years and he works on he's worked on like major major productions and major done he does prop design oh, and no. so he does like what like he'll do some of like he built the interior of an airplane on a set that I worked on once. Um, so just like wild problem solver. Um, but he would get tasked with these major pivots at the last second. And it'd be like, it was just like, even if it seemed like just a nightmare, he had a way of just being like, oh, it's going to be fine. Yeah. Before I know it, it's going to be a month from now. And I'm going to be thinking about this. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And then, and then one, at one point he said, I, I thought this was wild. He goes, Timmy, in 20 years, you will, you would give all of the money and everything you own to be back to now. Like, it's even crazy. though it's like the worst week in your twenties, <laughs> <laughs> he was like, like, he was like, do you know how much I would pay? Even though if I could go back in time to the worst week of my 20 and here you know how much i would pay to do that <laughs> and he was like so you just gotta like think about that and i i actually think about that often i'm like even though this is a rough i mean obviously there are exceptions you know bad weeks are, can be bad weeks but um but yeah because mostly most of the sets i was ever on or pro projects i was ever on that went bad they were like you know it was over in two weeks three weeks yeah yeah, it's a. Uh, I don't know if you ever like watch some of the. There's like little documentaries on YouTube about the making of uh, like Alien, the movie. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. I, so I love this franchise. Like I love Aliens, right? Like everyone loves. Yeah. It. But I love Alien, the Aliens, because it's such a crazy franchise that the way, the way it's. I like the story of how these movies get made, and if you if you watch one of the documentaries, they say like in this aliens Two, the second one with cameron yeah he, he actually they actually burnt down the studio they were shooting out in london or <laughs> and i'm like <laughs> really? talk about a bad day yeah <laughs> oh my god that's terrifying it's awful because um, you know the whole time they're like who has the insurance policy yes <laughs> and all all the work all the sets and stuff yeah um, they're like send the check now <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah that's wild. I I did see that. I think it was it wasn't Cameron. I think it was Ridley Scott talking about the dog in the alien costume. Who was that? Oh no, that was um that was David Fincher. 
David uh, Fincher talking about the dog and that it's so have you seen footage of this John Cassandra? <laughs> it's awesome. It's, it's so, so funny. funny. They like dressed like a greyhound up as like they wanted to, mm-hmm. you know, they wanted to have like the baby alien, which by the way, people, um, we're gonna move to Instagram in five minutes. So post your work. It's hashtag dry knife two two three average lords passage and hashtag dry knife. Please post it now. We're gonna keep talking for another five minutes or so. Um, so no, they, they like made this really cool prototype for a dog to wear, to be like one of the like infant. Oh, I did see that. Yes. Yes. I know what you're talking about now. And they just were doing everything they could to make it work. (laughs) What, what is, what does Fincher say? It's so funny. He's just, uh, if I remember correctly, he was like, cause in the aliens, I think it's aliens four, three, they're trying Mm -hmm. every different alien is like a different version. And they were like, wanted it to be more animal, like, like raptors and, you know, dog, a wolf pack. And he's like, we, they just have footage. He's like, we just tried it on a dog and it just would not work. And you see this little dog running around with an alien costume. (laughs) Yeah. I think, I think at some point he goes, because it was so funny. He's being interviewed. It's like behind the scenes for the DVD or something. He's just like, you know, you just put all your work into something and you try really hard. And at the end of the day, it just looks stupid. Yeah. <laughs> he's so, he's just so on the nose. It's just like, that's yeah, just the way it is, just, which is yeah. pretty cool to hear somebody like Fincher say that. I mean. Yeah. And, and he apparently historically, he had a horrible time. He hated working on that movie. You know, I didn't that, know that. It was, it was brutal for him because I think at that time that, all the execs and the suits were like really invested in the alien franchise and they, yeah, they had a whole different script. I think I want to say someone else, I mean, the the script always goes through like tons of different hands. Um, And so I think by the time it got to him, the studios were just like meddling in it heavy. So that, that always, it's amazing that any movie gets made in my opinion, (laughs) the feat of Herculean, you know, effort. Did you have you seen like the Netflix show, show the movies that made us? Uh, I've seen the t- toys that made us, but not the movies. Oh yeah, so they like they have all different themes. Like there's a season; it's all horror movies, and so they go into aliens. And um, there's like Christmas movies, like for a season. They're so fun, and it just goes into all of that. And how many movies that are classics that barely made it to the theaters and <laughs> now are cult classics yeah, tons yeah. Of them. on the topic of like creating and making your own thing and and learning that kind of like world building i'm really destined we're very excited we're for everybody to know this is the official announcement we're gonna yeah. be develop, we're gonna be developing a course with dustin awesome yeah. Welcome, it's, Dustin. It's, it's in the early stages but i unlike movies this is going to get made <laughs> somehow. And if it's terrible, uh, email to me, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I can promise that there will not be heavy meddling in Dustin's course, <laughs> but there might be heavy metal. Because, you know, you know, uh, no, I'm really excited about it. And I, uh, I, I'm pretty jazzed after our talk the other day about what it could be. And I definitely really want to dive into like a lot of film stuff because I think that, you know, illustration and film, they, they, you know, they go in together so well. I mean, how many times have you heard Spielberg talk about Norman Rockwell being an inspiration for right. his movies? Yeah, why, and, why is Spielberg on the board at the Norman Rockwell Museum? Yeah, exactly. So, I didn't uh, know that. That's amazing, John. Yeah. Um, yeah. So if you're interested, we'll, we'll be releasing more info probably in a month or so. But if you are interested, it's going to be a small class. Um probably seven to 10 weeks long. And uh, if you're interested in learning more um, right now, it's very unofficial. So just like email, email me, <laughs> <laughs> email or call school. Let me know you're interested. You'll be the first to know. So if you want to get on the wait list, hit us up. It's just hello at visualartspassage.com. Just shoot me a note. Every and, time uh, you say hello, I hear like Lionel Richie. Hello. hello. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm excited man it's gonna be fun yeah it will be that sounds I, awesome dustin thank you i'm 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 excited to be a part of the the visual arts passage crew um it's gonna be a good thing yeah what's going on 
I, I'm about to share some art, but I, I always share it too soon. And then I'm like, uh, I should And then find we all it go silent next. and wait for something to happen. And Yeah. then we awkwardly go back to conversation. Because I'm never like, oh, I should explore my Instagram in front of <laughs> a bunch of people. At least you're not exploring your desktop in front of everybody. So Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, the Instagram Explore page will tell us a lot about uh, a lot about you. a lot about your, your algorithm, your choices, Yeah. right? It would be like Mm -hmm. a lot of food videos here. What's going on? Are we? Mine right now is, or not mine, Visual Arts Passage is a mix of uh, UFC and painting. Oh, that's awesome. I'm in. <laughs> yeah. All right, everybody. You guys ready to see some art? Definitely. Let's do it. Here we go. Crazy. Oh, nice. Nice, Jess. Good stuff. That's That awesome, was awesome, Joanna. Shalada. Yes, that's great. Joy stuff. Oh, that's lovely. Beautiful. Great job, All Valerie. right. Oh, you nailed Nice. it. Great. Fun. <laughs> Very fun. so good. Oh, that's Oh, awesome. Look John, at that's that. awesome. Nailed the eyes. I'm just, I was, I was just testing the woe. We're going to give out more woes. It, we do one woe a night, Dustin. Tonight Okay, that's we gave out, fantastic. we gave out three woes, but we're going to give out one more woe. The panel decides. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's lovely. You did Maggie good, AJ. Nice. Oh my God. Felicity. That's awesome. Wow, Felicity. Age 13. That's amazing. That's great. Or Dan. <laughs> Okay. oh, wow, Padma. That's I like great how stuff. you did that. Cool. Oh, well, that's Oh, nice. that's, that's Yeah. really nice. Good stuff. Oh, that's lovely. Nice. Wow. <laughs> that's awesome. Fantastic. Okay, you got the killer. Fantastic. Nice. Really nice. Ooh, Karen, that's cool. I love that everything is unique Well, that's and different. really nice. Nothing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, isn't it? It's all different, right? Nice, Leslie. Oh, Nice. that's really great. Very delicately done. Yeah. Great job. Oh, that's cool. Always love your color choices. Mm -hmm. Oh, beautiful. Ooh. That's awesome. Look at her. Look at the hands. No. The hands. Lovely. <laughs> There's something about Critter Wings has to do that witch. It has to do the Wicked Witch of the West. <laughs> yeah, right. Really nice. Oh, that's cool. I like that. Love it. <laughs> That's awesome. That's Fun. awesome. Whoa, Randy. Damn. Randy, fantastic. So good. That's great. Lovely. I'm going to pet that goat. Nice, Nicole. <laughs> nice stuff. Great job. Oh, that's awesome. Nice, Aaron. Mm -hmm. Really good. <laughs> yes, Jeff. So fun. Yeah. Wow, Oh, Sally. Sally, I love it. I love I love the Oh, face that's in fun. the room. Yeah, I love Give give the Sally first. the woe. I love that. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that one was awesome. <laughs> oh, that's really good. Yeah. I This really is the like only, the end of that. yeah, this is the only sound effects that works tonight. <laughs> it's because it's meant to be. Keanu Yes. should always work. Yeah. Great job. Great stuff. Good stuff. Oh, that's fantastic. It just blows me away how everything is so unique and different. That's Yeah, great. it's it's inspiring. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love that. That's Yeah. crazy. You thought that was a photo? Nice. Really cool. Good job. Charlie the goat. <laughs> Oh, very popular this time around. Oh, that was awesome. Love it. Man eater. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what it said? Yeah, it's a Charlie You, the Goat you didn't man like eater. tag, don't tag Charlie's victim or anything like that. <laughs> that would be such a weird thing to do. <laughs> That's Oh, funny. that's cool. 
That's really cool. Well, that's awesome. Great job with the horns. Yeah. Yeah. Really nice. Wow. Great job. Good drawing. Good stuff. That's fun. Y'all did good. I, I struggled Good with drawing job. her. I was really excited to paint her too. I Yeah. agree. It's actually kind of Great, different. Marcy. Wow. Good job. Nice. Yeah. Oh, that's Ooh, pretty that's yeah, awesome. AJ. It's pretty metal, let's be honest. That <laughs> is super metal. <laughs> it is in the red eyes. That is that is you gotta repost that with some metal music behind it. Yeah. Just like some <laughs> Just some something like, whoa. Yeah, you need some Iron Maiden behind that. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. That sounds These are all so Dang, Gary. honored. Beautiful. Look at that. Wow. Killer. Oh, that's <laughs> cool, lips, dude. Peter. <laughs> Anya Taylor Joy seems like a person that was designed by Pete Cassell. <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. yeah Great job, Terry. Awesome. good stuff nice work Also seeing a lot of tra like traditional drawings. That's really cool to see. yeah 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 You go online and then you think everyone's drawing like on Procreate only. And uh, it's nice to see some like crayon drawings. That's awesome. I think a lot of people who work digitally mostly use this. They often post traditionally during drawing half, but it's always hard to know. Great job. That's Fun. cool. Good stuff. Really nice. Oh, that skipped around. I'm sorry. Oops. Nice and Okay. pretty. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> Great. <laughs> nice. Always, always amazing. That's a fun little panel. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. We get the year end panel from Jeff. I love that. Oh, it's so great. <laughs> Beautiful. So great. Love it. Beautiful. Yes. Just the signature <laughs> cheeks. so fun. Good stuff. Really good. Oh, I love that. Amazing. Great work. Fantastic. God, I love Oh, that. I like how you handle that. Yeah. It's really It's really nice. nice. It's like a, yeah. It really is. So regal. Ooh, that, That's I like awesome. that you put him in the background. I love that. Got Wow, the new. Oh, dang, Eric. Eric. Awesome. That's Good beautiful. Just beautiful. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, Xander. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Charlie, Charlie the goat after his uh his little time in Hollywood. <laughs> yeah. Let's move down to Wall Street. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Awesome stuff. Oh, that's great. Oh, you captured the light beautifully. Amazing. Beautiful, Peter. The Yes. light is perfect on that, that Mm like, -hmm. little, you got that glow. the glow, the glow. Good stuff. Oh my gosh, Oh, I I love love that. that. Nice. That's beautiful. <laughs> got him stomping. This is a great one to end on. Yes. Um, everybody, thanks for tuning in. I just want to say, if you are interested, I know we give a very loose description of what Dustin's class is, but if you liked hanging out with Dustin tonight, you're probably going to like his class. So send me a note if you want to save your spot or like, you know, be on the wait list. That was so much fun tonight. Thank you. Yeah. That was great. Thank you, everybody. Cassandra, Yeah, thank you. as always, thank you. Timmy, Dustin, awesome to have you here, man. Thanks to All be here. right. Loving you guys. Have a nice night. Yeah, Dustin, open door policy. Anytime Yeah, you got you want to to come come back. back on. Right, for sure, I'm I'm in. All right. All right. See Everybody, you. good night. Night. Night.